Howdy, y'all. It's your favorite trainer with a belt buckle. Whoo, wait, look how shiny that sucker is. Today, we're going to go over why a step up curl press sucks. It's an inferior exercise. So, let's take a look at the science. If you're not familiar with us, Show Up Fitness, we teach personal trainers. We have in person training here in La Jolla, West Hollywood, as well as Santa Monica. We're coming to you next. We want to get into the Bay Area, Texas, New York. We're expanding little by little. We're excited that we are online. So if you're not in Southern California right now, 2020, you can go online virtually and you can still attend live classes and ask questions. So let's take a look at this video on a step up curl press. Now I will record these and I'll put them on Instagram or uh, YouTube. So you'll see the reason this is inferior. I mean, this is a, about a 24 inch box. Shaking my head, no, 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 no. Why? Because the limiting factor is the bicep. So when you look at this exercise, a lot of people will do it because they'll say, oh, you're burning a lot of calories and you're working a lot of muscles. So we're gonna go over the size principle here in a second to show you how you can optimize the step up curl press. So if my limiting factor of this, we have the knee and the hip, and then we have the elbow and the shoulder. So the limiting factor is gonna be my elbow. That's the smallest muscle out of the three. So I have to choose a weight that's gonna be specific for my biceps. And don't get me wrong, those suckers are big, but I can lift more weight for a military press and I can lift significantly more when I do a step up. So what I would prefer to see to optimize the step up would be grab, heavier load. So I had 35s originally. So I doubled the load and I grabbed a 270s. So you're looking at 70 pounds. Now I'm doing 140 pounds. And I can do this for time's sake. I just did three reps, but I could probably do this for six to eight reps per side. So then what you would do is you would put the weights down and then you go right into your military press. These are 50 pounds. So it's appropriate per muscle. Notice how I tuck my butt under there. It's a posterior tilt. Squeeze your core and your glutes. You want to maintain, get your butt buckle out parallel at all times. So a common mistake with the military press is a flare. And it's going to keep you, it's going to make your, your midsection vulnerable. We call that an open canister and we don't want that. So then last, I would do my curls. Grab a weight that I can do for 35. Curls for the girls, tries for the guys. Crank those suckers out. Woo -hoo -hoo! Look at that pump. So now what we're doing is we're making the exercise better. So now from a scientific viewpoint, let's take a look at Henneman's size principle that we were reviewing in class. Now we go over PowerPoints daily with our live lectures and Henneman's size principle is gonna talk about motor unit recruitment. I'll make this bigger for you. So remember a motor unit is a, mo is a single neuron cell and all the associated muscle fibers, it innervates. So we have threshold and then we have force. Think of threshold as like a clap. It's not that loud. This would be like a small uh, type one muscle fiber. This would be like a type two A. That would be a type two X. So that when the threshold goes up due to the intensity, you're gonna get greater motor unit recruitment. So remember type one, slow twitch, you can do it for a long period of time. Fat is primarily the fuel source. As we go to medium into large motor units, you're gonna have a high threshold, which would be more uh, type X, they're using carbs as a fuel source. They refer to these as more anaerobic, type one or more aerobic. Think of a sprinter's all jacked up, more type two. And type one is like Skelly back here. It's gonna be uh, more aerobic. They recover a lot faster. When you train type one muscle fibers, you can train them more regularly. They don't need as much rest because they have a lot more capillaries and blood flow, so they recover faster. I love drawing this out for my clients. So here is the problem with a step-up curl press, is I was using 35s. So that would be maybe right here, and that's gonna be on the lower threshold of motor unit recruitment, maybe 12 to 15 reps. So I was, I was leaving a lot on the table. So now when I made it specific and I grabbed the 70s, I'll be closer to up here, and that would be your type 2X fibers, maybe even type 2A. And then when I did my military press, same thing. And then I did my uh, curls, and it'll be the same thing. They're all up here. Now, if you like to sweat, if you like that bird, Metcon, whatever the hell you want to call it, you can, again, train smarter. So start with the 70s, 
then go to the 50s. And then when you grab the 35s, do like a drop slash superset. Do step up curl presses then. And then when your legs fatigue out or your shoulders, just do the curls. Hell, do a farmer's walk. Walk around the gym as you quote unquote rest, active recovery, and then go back into that step up with the 35s. So we can train smarter, not harder, but why not train both? So too many times today we see on Instagram, on YouTube, people trying to come up with flashy exercises. We like the squat presses, the lunge lateral raises, but they're inferior due to the science aspect, Hinneman size principle. If you want to become a great trainer, every month we have- Oh, look at that sound. Perfect time. Have a great day, y'all.